Dick Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, well, who cares? I do. Where were you? When I show you what I got behind my back, you're going to forgive me for everything. Oh, good. You remember to get Richie's shoes from the repair shop? I forgot. <laughs> Honey, my book. What book? What? I tear myself apart for five years trying to write a book, and you say, what book? Oh, Rob, your book? <laughs> Untitled. A series of terribly important events in the fairly unimportant life of Robert S. Petrie. Oh, Rob, you finished it. You really finished yeah, it. Yeah, during my lunch hours and one dinner hour tonight. Oh, <laughs> boy. Well, I tell you what, you start your wilted salad and the rest of the meal is in the oven. Well, uh, honey, I don't want to have to eat in the bedroom. You're going to watch me read? Yes, indeed I am. <laughs> How can you say that you haven't even read the first page I yet? I haven't read the first word, and I'm not going to be able to with you staring over my shoulder. Oh, now, I'm, come on. I'm in the other room. Keep reading. Read, read. I'm going. Rob. This book is for my wife. I was born in Danville, Illinois. Then I married Laura Meehan in Joplin, Missouri. The reason I won't tell you about the time in between is that Except for the time I broke my cheek at age 11, my life was exactly like that of Dr. Zhivago. <laughs> Except his took place in Russia and mine in Danville. Rather than risk a lawsuit, I'll concentrate on my life after marriage. Like most strong marriages, mine started with a weak proposal. Rob, are you all right? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. It's just that it's awful cold out tonight. Cold? It must be 80 degrees. It is? <laughs> Rob, we'd better drive right back. I think you've caught a cold. You're shivering. Well, it's a family trait. Uh, all the male members of my family shiver when they're about to propose marriage. Is that what you're about to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Laura, will you marry me? You want me to marry you? Yeah, very much. Oh. <laughs> You're shivering. Well, all the female members of my family react this way when they accept marriage proposals. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I guess I guess we ought to. Yeah. <laughs> you say no. How about uh, Sunday? S sun Sunday? <laughs> Sunday would be fine. It's Sunday. and arrived at the chapel just in time to collapse.
it, honey. I know you were a little upset today, and I don't blame you. I'm not upset, and let go of my hand. But not until you promise to stay here and listen to me. Now, please. All right, I promise. Now, let go. Okay. Honey, you promise you stay and listen to me. Then you promise you'd marry me. Where were you? That's what I want to explain. I've never been so humiliated in my whole life, Rob. Everybody was here. Even my Aunt Mildred was here. She came all the way from Ohio. Oh, honey, please. I hate to see you cry like this. Well, it's the only way I know how to cry. I didn't jilt you. Well, somebody did. I came here to get married, and I'm still single. And let go of my hand. No, sir. No, you promised this hand to me in marriage, and you gave it to me. Now, I'm going to explain to you why I was late. And if you, if you want your hand back, then I'll be perfectly happy to give it to you. Make it fast. My train leaves in an hour. <laughs> Do you know that you are a very stubborn, unreasonable, egocentric young lady? How dare you! And give me back my hand! I'll give it back to you just as soon as I'm finished with it. Now, I'll admit that you suffered a little mental anguish here today. But are you so self-centered that you haven't noticed that I am suffering too? Oh, are you? I, I'm wincing with pain every few seconds. Oh, this is... Oh. Did you even notice that I'm covered with grease? And are my ankles fall out of twice its normal size? Oh! <laughs> Don't touch my foot! Well, what happened? There. That's what you should have said when you first saw me. Oh, Rob, what did happen? Well, it's a long story. You might miss your train. I'd like to hear it. Well... To tell you the truth, when I got up this morning, I was scared. So I wasn't sure that our getting married was such a good idea. Well, all right, now I'll admit I had some doubts. Well, all single men do. All single men who don't want to get married. All single men. There's a, there's a foreverness about marriage. It's frightening. Not to me. Well, you've never been a single man. <laughs> well, anyway, I... I, t I took a drive this morning out to our spot. Had a nice long talk with myself. I, I tried very hard to convince myself that our getting married was a big mistake. Oh? Yeah. For every good reason I could come up with that I, I should marry you, I came up with about 10 good reasons why I shouldn't. That's nice. Well, there's, oh, there's only one good reason I couldn't knock down. I love you. I know it's a ridiculous reason to get married, but I'm a little old fashioned. <laughs> well, that's, that's my story. Uh, if you want to go catch your train, you're perfectly free to go. Oh. How did you hurt your ankle? Well, the Jeep broke down and I started running here and I tripped and sprained it. Well, how did you get back here? I hopped. <laughs> Two and a half hours. I believe this is yours. Uh, next Sunday? Yes. Next Sunday, I was in no shape to get married, but I couldn't tell Laura. My ankle throbbed, and I had a cold that would kill a rhinoceros. My head was so stuffed, I couldn't hear one word the chaplain was saying. Thou have this woman to be thy wife, to love and to cherish, in sickness I and... I do. <laughs> I don't. In sickness and in health, until death do you part. Uh, I do. <laughs> and do you, Laura, take this man to... Love and to cherish in sickness and in health till death do you part? I do. Well, I, I do. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> the 
there be anyone present who knows why these two should not be joined in lawful wedlock, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. I do. <laughs> well, so do I. Uh, I, I. Well, we finally did get married, and one year and nine months later, we were lying in bed waiting impatiently for you know who. Honey, how do you feel? Fine. So, honey, how can you read when you know you might be a mother any minute? <laughs> Honey, I'm not going to be a mother any minute. Look, I was with you when the doctor said it could be any day now. He said any day, not any minute. Yeah, but honey, that was three days ago. <laughs> Don't you feel anything funny? I do feel something. Funny? No. I feel you're going to have a nervous breakdown if you don't relax and go to sleep. Now relax. I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed. Well, you don't look it. Believe me, darling, the best thing you can do for me is to go to sleep. I'll call you if anything happens. All right, honey. I'll try to get some sleep. You call me if anything happens. Who else would I call? I had a cousin called a cab. <laughs> she didn't want to disturb her husband. I promise I'll disturb you. Now go to sleep. Honey, what are you reading? What to do before the doctor comes. <laughs> what are you reading that for? You expect something to happen before the doctor comes? <laughs> no, Rob, I'm just reading to get sleepy. Honey, you never have any trouble getting to sleep. Why can't you go to sleep? Because I'm married to the noisiest husband in New York State. <laughs> honey. I'm sorry, honey, I'm just trying to... I'll call a cab. All right, all right. I don't want to hear another word out of me unless you call me, all right? <laughs> oh, dear. What's the matter? What? What? You said, oh, dear. I was just sighing. Well, honey, at a time like this, don't sigh unless you really mean it. I'll try not to. Right. Good night. Good night. It's time! Just never mind about the suit. <laughs> it says, any day now, any day now. slept in a box of prunes. We all decided I ought to have my suit pressed. That's a friendly service. He's got the suit to go. Oh, oh uh, will you give that to me? Watch out! Watch out, out the pastry. They got health laws in this state. I'm sorry. Goodness, I never saw anything. <laughs> Will you pass it over to the boy, in please? In case you want to get rid of it. Boy, would you get it right back and eat it very badly? Quick. What'd you do? Sleep in this thing? Yes, I do. Will you please go. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're going to buy something? How about a Danish pastry? How much? Press the pants. I'm going. I'm going. Ah, oh, watch out. How are you all finished with your own personal little doings? Yeah, he's here. Hey, Rob, it's your wife. I think this is it. Oh, hand me the phone. Watch out. <laughs> You're gonna pay for it. I'll pay for it. Walk on them. Walk. Rob, here's the phone. Oh. 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 You want a piece of ice? No, thanks. Hey, hey, oh. meat is good for that. I got a beef for no, you. Thanks. No, thanks. <laughs> hey, Laura? Oh, what happened? Are you all Nothing. right? Nothing. I'm all right, honey. I'm fine. I got hit in the head with a phone. How are you? Well, I don't know. I just called the doctor, and he said I had plenty of time, but I should start getting ready to go to the hospital. Oh, I love you. This is it. Yeah. Oh. 
you forget something? Well, hang it up for me, will you? Rob! Oh. Your suit! I can pick it up tomorrow. You can't run around New York with your pants off. Ah! <laughs> no, give me your pants. All right, I really need my pants today. I'm having lunch with a sponsor. Buddy. I would, but they never fit you. I don't care what I look like. I just want to be arrested. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Wearing Buddy's pants, I rushed home and got there just in time to smash my car in the driveway. Never mind my pants, honey. Come on, let's go. Right. You can't go, mister. Oh, mister, I'm going to drive my wife myself. You and me in the car in front of us all locked bumpers when you're knocked into me. Well, can't we unlock them? You've got to have a lot of help for that. We're like welded together. Oh, my God. I'll have to go. I know. Millie, Millie, call any of the neighbors and ask them. If, no, no, I'll do it. Can I use your phone? Oh, no, I'll use ours. Where is it? It's over there. there. <laughs> What's their number? Who's? Anybody. Calm down. We have plenty of time. Honey, I want you to sit down. Don't stand up. Sit down. Oh, right. That's it. <laughs> Hello, operator. Operator, my wife's having a baby. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Give me the police. Ron, why don't we just call another taxi? Yeah, let me call my company. We'll have another cab here in five minutes. Yeah, Ron, There's let There's not going to be any company. Oh, don't hang up. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Uh, uh, send a squad, squad car here right away. Good. Our troubles are over, honey. Rob. A squad car is coming right down here any minute now. Rob. I'm think of what's the matter. You didn't give them our address. I did. Oh, my God. A week later, we brought home a baby. However, certain evidence convinced me that the baby wasn't ours. So we decided to take his footprints. There's something very funny about this footprint. <laughs> Let's compare them. I know what's funny about that footprint. It's got six toes. Oh, wait. <laughs> Your thumbprint. <laughs> Rob, I would say that that footprint and that footprint are from that baby. Are you sure? Jerry, are you positive? Yep. That's what I was afraid of. Read the top line. Sex male. Name, baby boy, P. Peters. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that proves it, Jerry. Well, that proves nothing. Jerry, you said those were both the same. Well, what do I know about footprints? I'm a... <laughs> wait, 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 before you tell Laura, at least check with the hospital. Huh? All right, Jerry, I'll check with them first. It's probably them checking with me. <laughs> Hello. Yes, this is Robert Petrie. Who? It's Mr. Peters. What does he want? What do you think? Ah, <laughs> uh, hello. Uh, yes, Mr. Peters. That's right. You have something of ours, and we have something of yours. Uh, dried figs. <laughs> she got Laura's aunt's figs. Uh, Mr. Peters, you don't, uh, you don't know then. I see. Well, uh, Mr. Peters, this is going to be a little hard to, to tell you. Let's see, how can I put it? Uh, look, Mr. Peters. You know, there's a tremendous similarity between room 208 and 203. If you close up the open end of a three, you got an eight. <laughs> right? Now, there's also a great similarity between Robert Petrie, yes. <coughs> yeah, that's right. I write for the Alan Brady show. But th I'm glad you think our show's funny, Mr. Peters, but I'd like to get this thing simple. There is also a great similarity, Mr. Peters, between our names, Peters and Petrie. Now, our wives had a baby on the same day in the same hospital, and the hospital was very busy, Mr. Peters. What am I getting at? Miss Peters, uh, let me ask you a personal question. Who does your baby look like? Uh-huh. Well, ours doesn't look like neither one of us, neither. <laughs> I think I'm making myself very clear, Mr. Peters. We have each other's babies. Mr. Peters agreed to come over and straighten things out. Now, all I had to do was find a good way to tell Laura that she had the wrong baby. I love you very much. <laughs> Honey? How much do you like that baby? <laughs> oh, Rob, don't tell me you're jealous already. Oh, no, honey, I'm not jealous. Oh, that Dr. Spock knows everything that man is. He doesn't know everything in the whole world. But did you know that one out of every 50 million women has the wrong baby? Well, that's a cute trick. How does she manage it? <laughs> Honey, she doesn't have a boss she's having it. After she has it, she has it. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that we have the wrong baby? <laughs> You're crazy. Honey, 
keep calm. No, that our baby is probably just as, as cute as that one is. Will you stop? Where did you ever get such a crazy idea? At the hospital. That's where we got it. We got the wrong flowers. You forgot about the blueberry tarts and the rice pudding pretty fast, didn't you? Not to mention dried figs. Dried figs. Rob, this is our baby, and that's all there is to it. Honey, he doesn't even look like us. Rob. You see? All I see is our baby with a blue foot. <laughs> look at that, Rob. Uh, uh, ink. How did it get there? Jerry and I put it on. <laughs> Why? Well, just running a series of tests. Rob, there are no series of tests in the world that are going to convince me that is not our baby. Oh, honey, I don't blame you. You can't face the facts. Poor kid. Oh, Rob. Well, honey, that's probably the Peters now. Brace yourself. Rob, nobody is taking this baby. Do you hear me? Nobody. Well, I think it'd be better if you went to your room. I can handle it. I am staying right here. Hi. We're Mr. and Mrs. Peters. Uh, come in. <laughs> Is it a book? Oh, Rob, it is. It really is. It is. I love it. Do you really? Yeah, I only read the first chapter. Is the rest as good? Honey, it better. I improve as I get along. I, be, I start to use punctuation, everything. <laughs> I mean, like if you were a publisher and you didn't know me, didn't know I'd written it, would you publish it? You mean, is it good? Yeah. Yeah, oh, Rob, it really is. Well, boy, I'm glad to hear that because I sent it to a publisher. If he turns me down, you got a deal. Don't mind. Yeah, honey, I, I am so excited. I, I don't even... <laughs> You mean he wouldn't even give you a hint about what the surprise was? No, he just said I'm bringing Alan Brady and the gang home to make a party. I bet it's about the book. I bet he found a publisher. Who do you think so? Hi. Hey, hi. Hi, hi. hi. hi Jer. Laura, how are you, Jer? How are you? Hi, son. I'm nearly ready for dinner, Rob. Are you ready for a little bit of good news? Yeah, I, think I heard so. from the publisher today. Yeah. He hates it, boy. <laughs> he said to remind him of about 50 other books. He's kidding. No, no, that's what they said. That's right. One editor said it stunk. <laughs> well, why is everyone so happy? Because Alan read it and he loved it. What do I know from style? <laughs> Honey, Alan wants to produce it as a television series. Your book's going to be a television series? It's true. Of course, I won't do it until after my series is defunct, which may never be. <laughs> the Alan is going to play me. Yeah, and the three of us are going to write it, and Leonard Burchard is going to produce it. That's right. Hey, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Second, honey, what do you think? Oh, gosh, I don't know what to say. Alan's really going to play you. And Rob won't have to shave his head. I'll wear a toupee. <laughs> Isn't that terrific? Yeah. Who's going to play me? Oh, a uh, great comedian. Who? Uh, who? Uh, uh, Martha Dillard. Yeah. Martha Dillard? <laughs> <laughs> With, uh, With my idea. <laughs> really? <laughs> Is that definite, Rob? Yeah, yes. Yes. Hey, who's going to play me? Your part will be cartoon. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. What's the matter? Well, I was just thinking, Laura's so pretty, and, and if Martha Diller's going to play her, who's going to play me? Oh, come I'm on. Gonna... <laughs> 